26-point loss at Oregon on Saturday. It will not get any easier this week. Caleb Williams at USC coming to Boulder on Saturday. Here's Deion Sanders on being Deion Sanders. <clears throat> Your whole life. You've been divisive. People yeah. didn't really when love I came you. Came out the wound. I was booed. right, or they really don't, right? Yeah. So, and, and a lot of those don'ts have been very vocal this week. How? What's your message to them? And then, and then, what do you tell your? I don't locker have room a guy? message to detractors or haters. I don't have a message. I don't take my time to respond and to defend myself. Why would I do that? I'm, I'm giving you a microphone if I'm doing it. I'm giving you solace that you're in my life. I don't care. I really don't. Deion Sanders, the most fascinating person in college football this season, win or lose. Oh. Heather and Paul are up with us here. So they get the, the second shot here. Paul, Paul, what did that blowout loss last week mean for Dion and for Colorado? I think overall, Greeny, it didn't mean very much. We're still watching him here on ESPN. We're still riveted to every single thing he says. And Saturday, when that game begins, all eyes will be on him. The, and four of the top seven rated games in the country this year have been Colorado. Uh, and the same will happen because he, he is electric and, and, and he is the most magnanimous figure in this game. The game will be difficult for Colorado, but not impossible. I thought Oregon was a no-shotter. This one, they've got a puncher's chance, not much of one. They're playing one of the better teams in the country, but a team that is still susceptible on defense. What do you think, Heather? I'm not giving them a puncher's chance. I'm not going anywhere near <laughs> the upset pick on this one. I think it's a knockout blow, Paul, and I'll tell you why. Because USC's defense, for all you can say about Alex Grinch last year and missed tackles and everything, this year that USC defense is getting after quarterbacks. They've got 16 sacks this year. And guess what? Shadour Sanders has been sacked 22 times, the most in the Power Five conference and it's been seven times in each of the last two games they just don't have the depth right now but you know what I agree with Paul who cares it doesn't matter because this team won one game last year and I think they can win six if Colorado is bowl eligible this year I think they remain and finish the season the way they started the best story in college football yeah th that's the thing is that People, because of this, the world in which we live, went completely crazy at the beginning of the season. Oh, they're going to win the national championship, and all of a sudden anything short of that seems like a failure. The reality is it was an unrealistic expectation in the first place. Then we get back to Alabama. Paul, a week ago it felt like Nick Saban's uh, grasp on college football as we know it was teetering. And then he plays a huge second half against Ole Miss. What do we say now? I feel a lot better, and I'm not going to scream Bama is back, but they're closer to, being, closer to being back than they were a week ago. I mean, Greeny, we did not overstate the importance of that game. The season was kaput with a loss, but we forgot one important thing. Nick Saban was facing his favorite target in Lane Kiffin. That's an automatic win, and from now on, uh, we will say that because Lane Kiffin will never beat Nick Saban if, if, if Saban coaches to be 100 years old. Uh, so I, I think Bama is back for a couple of other reasons. They have plenty of problems. But the SEC is weaker than it has been. There's not a team that is just impenetrable, including Georgia. So LSU, Tennessee, uh, A&M, all these games that, that Alabama will play, they'll be close, but they're, they're, not, uh, they're not insurmountable for, for even a flawed Nick Saban team. Heather, is Bama back? No, I'm not on the Bama bandwagon just yet. That doesn't mean they can't do it. That doesn't mean they can't do it. But here's the thing. Look, we're all watching these games, right? And Jalen Milrow is limited as a passer. Their run game is averaging less than four yards per carry. The offensive line is struggling in run blocking, pass protection. This offense is not a top four offense, period. That matters to the college football playoff selection committee. These guys have iPads with cut-ups of tape. They're watching the film just like everybody else is. Now, if they win the SEC, that's a different story. But as we sit here today, guys, entering week five, I got to see a little bit more from that offense. Give me something.